Hello Africa, welcome to African Students' Voices on AAU TV. And don't forget, AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. Today we are coming to you live from the headquarters of the Association of African Universities here in Accra, Ghana. My name is Jimai Madela Dendoche and I'll be your host. Today we are talking about online learning and student engagement adapting for academic welfare so i read something little here so um we believe that online learning and student engagement is a topic of tremendous significance especially when we consider the rapid growth of online learning during covid and even after covid and in 2020 when the world was grappled with the challenges of covid 19 pandemic it was seen that over 1.6 billion students across the globe were affected um, by school closures. And there is a research here that was done um, by UNESCO that this shift forced educators to adapt moving to the digital um, realm. Today we are here to discuss uh, or explore how students perceive the transition to online education. What are some of the challenges they face and equally what are some of the advantages and how, how has this online system of education impacted their academic um, engagement and well-being. I have here with me lovely guests, by, but before I introduce them, we'll go for a quick break. And when we come back, we'll delve into the discussion and I'll introduce my guest. Stay tuned. Welcome back from the break. And if you just joined us, this is African Student Voices on AAU TV. You can follow the conversation on our social media handles, Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube. And as we as we all know, we are discussing online education and student engagement. So I have here with me lovely guests and I would we are also joined by um, a student or a student leader from the Gambia and I'll introduce my guests. So I'll start from the ones here with me. I'll start from you. Sure, thank you very much. So I am Obed Osu, a student from the University of Ghana reading political science and geography. Okay, you're welcome Obed. Thank you. Okay. My name is Okon Siang. I am the current National Service President for La and Quantanen and I'm pleased to be here. Okay, so I'll also give a minute to my guest online from the Gambia to introduce himself. Thank you very much, um, Madam Moderator, for giving me the chance to speak um, in this forum. Um, good morning, colleagues. Good afternoon. My name is Amadou B. Jobate from the Gambia. I am uh, currently the African Student Representative at Global Students Forum, um, which is known as Steering Committee at the Global Student Forum. Um, I spend all my entire life in student union governance as well as in youth leadership, through which I was one time the president of the Gambia College Students Union way back in 2018. Um, from 2019 to 2021, during the COVID and after, suddenly I served as the Secretary General of the National Union of Gambia Students in the Gambia. Um, moving forward, I was also appointed by the All Africa Student Union as a country representative in the Gambia, um, in which I have also led several delegations from the Gambia Students Union, as well as the national um, Gambia youth organizations to different international organizations. At this point in time, I also serve as the country representative for IFED Global, um, that has been organizing conferences both in Accra and outside in other parts of the Africa. So. I definitely have a lot of experience in the civil space and youth engagement. And my mission, vision, and veneration is to create a knowledgeable society for all, thereby mm -hmm. bringing education to the doorstep of every African child. So I okay. thank you all. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we'll go straight um, into our discussion, our topic for today, which is online learning and student engagement. Let's start from um, the COVID times. I mean, before COVID, I know that there was online learning, but I think it wasn't as effective as it was when COVID came into, into I mean, when COVID approached us. Yes, and there has been a shift to online system of education when we, some of us, were not um, ready for it. But then due to COVID, we had to, you know, shift even without, um, I mean, getting more experience or 
having that experience that we needed for online system of education. Um, so I'll come to you, Mr. Oppo. Um, let's talk about how the shift to online system of education during the pandemic affect your academic experience. Ah, well, uh, I believe we cannot talk about online learning without uh, making mention of COVID-19 because in as much as online learning was there, it wasn't as seen as it was when COVID hit us. Yeah. When COVID hit us, um, it brought a significant um, disruption in our educational sector. Yeah. And in order to avert the educational losses, we had to adapt the online learning, mm -hmm. which, um, I mean, it was a new thing to us, yes. for those who were in the classrooms, who were, mm -hmm. I, I did math and stuff, so you can imagine, okay. I was in the classroom throughout, yes. and now I had to go home and take up classes online. Initially, it, it was a challenge, and I believe that online learning requires a disciplined, it, it requires discipline. Yeah. As a student, if you're not that disciplined, you cannot um, engage and you cannot excel with online learning because mm -hmm. um, it's very flexible. Yeah. where you are in the house you are taking yeah. the, the courses online and you need to sit at the comfort of your zoom mm -hmm. your, your home mm -hmm. and then take up the, the courses at, at first it was cool mm -hmm. it, it looked as if it was the best, <laughs> I mean, because um, we wouldn't have to move from our homes to the lecture rooms, yeah. we would now sit in our comfort zones and then do our classes. But mm -hmm. uh, some students were affected. Yeah. A lot of us were affected. Personally, I was affected at some point mm -hmm. when it comes to the network issues, Okay, mm -hmm. when it comes to those who uh, stayed afar mm -hmm. from Accra, those who had network challenges, those who did not have proper devices to um, delve into this o o online activity. Okay. So it became an, an, an issue. Right. So it has a, a good side and then also a bad, a bad side. So don't worry, we'll talk about the challenges. Yeah. But then how did that affect your well-being? Seeing that, first of all, you are you were doing statistics, yeah. yes, and then you were in class throughout and all of a sudden you have to move to online. I mean, your well-being, your, in your mind, in your brains, <laughs> How were you able to cope? How was the experience uh, like? It was new. Mm -hmm. It was new because now it, it, it seemed as if we were uh, now in a new era where mm -hmm. there was a pandemic. Okay, yes. it, it didn't only affect the educational sector; it affected the working sector, yeah. the church, everywhere as well. Yes. Okay, That's so true. in as much as it was new, we had to adapt because that is who we are. We are mm -hmm. human beings, yeah. and in as much as we are people, and then we are um, used to the indigenous things, we need to also adapt to the new things. That's so uh, it was challenging at at first mm -hmm. because now I had to be introduced to um, meet meet. Uh, meetings how to yeah. zoom, zoom came up how to figure our way around it mm -hmm. it was a bit challenging but okay. then in the end as we are students we uh, we yeah. need to learn so yes yeah. we need to maneuver our way around it so we're able to do it okay so mr um, mr Obed, let me come to you how is the experience like the shift thank you very much so before i proceed to um, give my submissions on the question. Mm -hmm. I would like to acknowledge the fact that my fellow panelists had such quiet introduction. Okay. Looking at the background, their positions that they've been having for quite some time now. Yeah. Well, I'm also the NUC's IT project director okay. or coordinator mm -hmm. for the 57th NUC's administration. All oh, right. Yes. So looking at the shift and whatever thing happened mm -hmm. between the COVID era and the online education that we are now having well it has come to stay mm -hmm. at a time where COVID hit us we we're supposed to adapt by all means because COVID can't let us hold on on our academic um, purposes and academic works yeah. so that alternative came in to help so regardless of whatever thing you would think oh I can't do it it's this and that you have to still adapt because you have to pace in and know that because of education we are all supposed to get somewhere and we have to do whatever it takes mm -hmm. to get there. So COVID came in and we all have to adapt, just as I've been saying. That's true. So that's quite cool. And people were, it's a new something that yeah. came. So we were finding it difficult sure, in yes. one way or the other to adapt. Mm -hmm. But eventually we did. And right now it has come to stay, I guess. Okay, yeah, it, I believe it has actually come to stay. So Mr. Um, Amadu, if you are with us, um, I would want us to talk about, I mean, students in Rwanda, uh, sorry, students in Ga the Gambia. How was the experience shifting from the in-person system of education to the online system of education? What did, what was happening in Gambia and how was the adoption like? Once again, um, 
the online education um, was something that the University of the Gambia um, experienced, as well as some other institutions. When COVID hits, um, so the on-site lectures were um, banned for a while. But then, within this period, one good thing that it also does, or that the students are able to do, it forced most of the students to be able to use the current day technology to be able to advance on how to use, how to connect to the Google Classroom. And the my surprise, it has even came um, to become a new thing to some of the students to understand that, okay, there is something called Google Classroom that we can use with all those beautiful features. So when it started, you can also see that, you know, we have sometimes classroom problems in the Gambia <clears throat> when it comes to um, university education. So most of the time, the classrooms are always full and congested to the capacity. But the Google Classroom is also able to accommodate large class sizes whereby you know, people can join from their various destinations. So one of the beautiful things that it does also, it was also, um, it saved the cost of time, um, energy and resources, you know, and also to be able to give every student that mandate or that opportunity to be able to um, come and then join the class. And the issue of the classroom size was no longer the issue again. So aside from that, the other opportunity that it also created is the lectures are also being recorded, even though some people will face some internet um, hearing difficulties, but then from the recordings, which has been, which will be shared later. And then even if you miss the lectures, then you can still always go back to be able to do that. And one thing I, I like it for so is that, you know, most of them are able to use the Google Classroom and they are able to turn in their assignments. And that is something that they may continue to use even after here, when, wherever they may happen to see themselves. Although at some point we were all crumbling and does not know what to do, you understand? Um, <clears throat> and how could uh, we adopt to this new methodology of teaching? But at some point, this were some good things um, that it does for the University of the Gambia, even though other institutions find it very difficult due to financial means and also some IT, IT offices within other academic institutions where are not mm -hmm. also having the limited resources to be prepared for this because it's an emergency situation that everything comes into one. So that mm -hmm. makes it difficult for them. But thank God, University of the Gambia was able to implement this. Um, it definitely works out and students were unable to defer, they did not defer their course and they also graduate on time. So that's okay. what I have for now. Maybe when it comes to the challenges, I will also come to share uh, yeah. my experience. Um, yeah. yeah, I think you started something on the challenges. So I would want us to delve straight into that. So were, they, were there some unique challenges that students were facing or let me say lecturers were facing? Yeah, of course. Um, uh, most of the times, most of the students were not having the gadgets um, to come online to attend to lectures. That was a very, very big challenge. And uh, mm -hmm. the other thing is we have some uh, students and lecturers who have never met, but then they rather only met online. So at some point, it was very difficult for visually impaired. We have some visually impaired students, like the differently able, we may call them. So those are all things that we later understand that it wasn't working for some of them. Because imagine that someone who could only see but couldn't hear will really hear the voice of a lecturer, even though if it is physical, but then some people were able to see what they couldn't hear. So the physical, um, the visually impaired student as well as the differently able students find it very difficult to adopt to that. So that was actually one of the major challenges. And then the internet, okay. the cost of internet has actually is been very expensive in the Gambia, as well as you know stable internet and the device. So these were the major challenges for um, classes to for students to attend their lectures during the COVID. So so far, those were the three major challenges that we experienced as far as you know the online learning is concerned. Okay, let me delve a, a bit deep into the visually impaired students that. I mean, had to join online and had that um, challenges joining online. So what was done for them? How were they able to proceed with their education or with their learning? How, how was it done? At some point, this has even led to the late submission of their grades because what happened was um, they, need, they got some experts for them who are in charge of um, this visually impaired in the country here. So in consultation with that particular unit, they have specialists who they uh, coaches that they brought to help them. So while the class is ongoing, they will have those people, you know, using their camera and then also 
trying to explain to them from what the lecturer said. Or sometimes from the recordings of the lectures, then they will later also find their own time to repeat mm -hmm. what has actually happened during the actual lecture hours. And then the university faculties, as well as the lecturers, we are also made to understand and to give them some little time so that their grades can be submitted later. So it has affected some of them a little bit, especially the finalists, final year students who were supposed to be graduated yeah. because their grades could not be on their portal on time. But however, the management also saw some sympathy and understanding to be able to mitigate the situation. Okay. Although at some point it has favored some of them also who were unable to also climb on top of the story buildings during the um, on-site classes because they were using wheelchairs mm -hmm. and then sometimes yeah. people struggle a lot to help them to push them up. So those people, uh, the, the, the cripples were actually very uncomfortable because the online class really favored them. Their only problem was they yeah. couldn't climb up, you know, to attend yeah. certain lectures at upstairs and all that. But those visually okay. impaired and then some deaf people were actually finding it difficult. The general student, but the main problem was the cost of internet and also the gadgets. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Amadou. Um, so, Mr. Pong, I'll come to you um, shortly. All right. um, let's talk about some of the challenges we faced here in Ghana during the, the shift to online system of education. All right. So, before I even um, begin, I would like to uh, disagree with Mr. Okay. Amadou when, when he says uh, mm -hmm. we do graduate on time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I completed school in 2022, but then graduated in 2023. So okay. I would agree, I would disagree, disagree. with him because um, COVID actually um, halted a lot of things. And just as he said, we had to, after COVID or during COVID, we had to now adapt. Yeah. Some some schools were not in session for some time because they were now trying to get their gadgets, their tools, their resources yeah. to um, initiate the online learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, Going into the challenges, uh, my main problem was with the lectures. Okay. For the students, mm -hmm. we were able to adapt very, very well since we are the well, we are in the world of technology. And mm -hmm. but for our lecturers who are older, whom during their time gadgets were not really there. Yes. Okay. They 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 were finding a bit of a challenge when it comes to assessing the mm -hmm. Zoom and in the Google Meet apps. Okay. okay. So. So there was a bit of a challenge with the lectures. Um, in the University of Ghana, I think they, they held um, a, a meeting about that, mm -hmm. where they educated the lecturers on some of these things, how to use the Google Meet. And then okay. even for the students, some of us were mm -hmm. facing challenges. Okay. And then moving on to the physically Im Im impaired. Um, I joined one lectures one time, and then there, there were these sign language mm -hmm. I don't know. yes yeah was the lecturer sp who, spoke yes. yes so I, I mean all these things were incorporated into the mm -hmm. um online learning and then the okay. lectures i want to say something you know during covid there was the feel that students join um lectures let's say a lecture mostly is like three two hours or mm -hmm. something like that yes a student will join sometimes they are in but they get distracted i mean you're in the comfort of your home yes something can can come up those who are let me say have a family or something something can just yeah. disrupt yes. so how, uh, how was that a lot of times uh we were disrupted and just mm -hmm. as i said earlier you need to be very disciplined to mm -hmm. actually walk through this online and this yes. era because trust me, you are in the comfort of your home. Mm -hmm. Some students, yes, do join and then they just put their phone somewhere and go do whatever they exactly. want to do. So, I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the lectures upon seeing some of these things also took attendance. Mm -hmm. Oh, on money are boarding. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he's following the game. Uh -huh, so, all yeah. these things also helped. Uh, the online learning favored some courses, but it didn't favor others. Courses like um, those who are into the chemicals, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the chemistry, yeah. where you'd have to mix chemicals and then I'm just watching it online yeah. and then the lecturer is, is just, doing, just it. doing it. Okay, so, I mean, we, we were limited on the aspects of the theory, yes. the, the, the theory yeah. aspect. The, okay. okay, we're just learning, learning, learning. Like, I mean, just listening to the just, lectures. Just, just okay. listening to it. And then the pedagogical... Um, means we're not inside where we need to use our hands we need to actually yeah, go on practicals, field yeah. practicals were not there, not there. Okay. so you. these are some of the challenges we were facing after. Okay. and then also um the network i, I think during COVID, mm -hmm. um the university gave i was a beneficiary i was i i, I experienced 
covered and then the online learning where okay. I was in the house yeah. and now just to doing it. Okay. And I think the university at one point in time gave out free Vodafone cards. Oh, okay. Yes, where there were data mm-hmm. on, on it and then we used to but then some of I mean we are students. Mm-hmm. Over my card no yeah the back of your movie yeah people use it for something else. For, for, for something yeah, else so true. i mean uh, these were some of the challenges we were, we're that's, facing that's as true, okay so mr Ogun, briefly if you want sure. to add something since sure. both of you are yeah sure. thank you very much so they've said it all mm-hmm. but there's this challenge that most students faced at that time yeah. network issues uh-huh. we all know that in africa as a as a continent, you mm-hmm. are facing these network connection issues. Yeah. And with regards to that, even if you you, you were giving um, data or anything of such sort, yeah. the connectivity would be very yeah. low. Yeah. So we were facing that issue. We could be in a meeting and you'll be talking, then you face some technical issues. You, we, you have something. to log out, log in mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Then it, it was creating a whole lot of mess at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes, they've said it all. So, connectivity issues, uh-huh. spatial differentiation, yes. where we are all located in our homes. We, some people are, let's say, they are at a hilltop. Mm-hmm. And at that place, there is no mm-hmm. connection mm-hmm. whatsoever. Yes. Some some people too are somewhere very far away, like in the rural area, okay. that deep, deep rural, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. So okay. all these things were challenges um, facing. Talking about, talking about, let me just add okay. a, a little briefly. Small, yeah. briefly, yes. Yeah. So um, I think, with what he was saying, that mm-hmm. some were facing network challenges. Me, per personally, when the university gave me the Vodafone chip, it wasn't working in my area. I mean, Vodafone wasn't working so in my so area. So that means you lost this. For the five gig was the one gig that I put on it, so it didn't do anything. It was came, yes, I mean. And it was okay. new to us too. We weren't yeah. prepared for yeah, that. So exactly. Some people weren't even having phones because I knew it's most SHS phones. students were having, we were also having such online meetings mm-hmm. and everything. But the readiness to get those smartphones and laptops to join those meetings were a challenge mm-hmm. too at that time. Okay, so I see the conversation is is getting more interesting. But we'll go for a quick break, and when we come back, we'll delve more into the discussion. Stay tuned. Uh-huh. Welcome back. And if you just joined us, this is African Student Voices on AAU TV, your trusted voice of higher education in Africa. And we are still continuing our discussion on online learning and student engagement before we left. But then don't forget to join in the conversation on our social media handles, Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube. So before we went on the break, we were talking about challenges that came up um, during the online system of um, education. So we are moving straight into online learning's impact on academic engagement and students' well-being. Um, Mr. Amadou, please, are you with us? Yes, yes. Okay, so I want to start from you um, as we are talking about the online learning's impact on academic engagement and student well-being. So let's talk about how... uh, online learning has influenced your academic engagement and equally what is motivating it all right um thank you once again so okay. one of the most important thing that i noticed during this um, online learning during the course of the period of the covid was that um, yeah. we have some students who deferred their course because they have um, relegated to um, shift to study in other part of the world and then yeah. for the fact that they were not on site, they, they were having, uh, they don't have the chance and the opportunity to complete their course or so. But when COVID hit, it, um, it was also another opportunity for them to register their courses again and then they do their um, courses online. So while that was the case, some of us had the opportunity to interact with them. Like you'll be in class, somebody will tell you, you know, I'm in America, you know, I'm in Denmark, I'm in so, 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 I'm so mm-hmm. pleased. So they share their experiences and guess what, you know, they technology the issues of technology some of them were also you know made life friends up to now i still talk to some of them understand they help in a lot of things and for the fact that they now to study in abroad in american universities and then uk and the other places they you know you all know how things work um, in the first world countries or in the developed countries so they were very yeah. very helpful to the rest of the students who were finding it very challenging to use these devices and the likes and then that has actually continued until today it's benefiting a lot of students out there. So that is one of the main things that I understand. And then that shows me that for the fact that we are in a university, 
um, uh, distance education or online learning can connect different kind of people with different background and then as well as different intellectualities, you know, at all point in time. So that was actually the most interesting thing I found um, in the online learning. Okay. Okay, Mr. Pong, let me come to you. All so right. let's talk about, I mean, the same thing. How has the online um, system of education influenced your academic engagement? I mean, oh. now it wasn't in person anymore. Yeah, no. Yes. It, 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 was, it was really good. I mean, looking at our grades before that, it was an improvement. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, it was. It was, I mean. The fact that we, we had to take up the courses online, mm -hmm. we had to sit, and then we, we used to do our, our exams, and then you know <laughs> on, on, online we used to do online. online. So it, it 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 got you. I mean, it gave you the chance yes. to not to copy, but, <laughs> to <learn laughs> but to learn. Okay, okay. to to, to um, come together and then do our works together. Okay, mm -hmm. and then also it was very flexible. And for some people who had the challenges of focusing in class. Yes. You know, when you're sitting in a classroom, people are making noise, people are chatting, people are texting, people mm -hmm. are talking. Um, it, it becomes uh, very destructive. For, yeah. for some people, this was a time for them to be in the comfort of their homes, to have a personalized learning where they yeah. join on their own, they sit and then they learn. Mm -hmm. Some people are like that. I mean, everybody and then how um, he or she learns when it comes to uh, education and then yeah. um, grabbing things. Okay, yeah. So f for those people, it, it did help them. But in, in general, I, I think it was it was one of the best times okay. in, in every student's life. Really? During COVID, during COVID was, okay. was, the best. was one of the best. Why did you say oh, that? It, it was. Uh, I don't think there's a student who can boldly say that during COVID, he or she failed a, a course. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't see that. It, it, it didn't see that. It didn't, I mean, we all passed. We, we, we all excelled with, mm -hmm. with, with so many A's. Okay. With, with so many A's. I, I mean... It got to a, a point where we used to do our, our courses online, which, um, I mean, using the AIs, and yeah. na, na, now we have AIs, mm -hmm. okay, and our lecturers used to catch us. So, mm -hmm. yeah, work back everyone when was using in. AI. But nonetheless, I, I mean, they still passed us because there wasn't much time. I mean, time was already far spent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so would you say, I mean, COVID made them, I mean, pass you when you didn't even have to? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I wouldn't say that. I, yeah, because you just said that. <laughs> I mean, the time was far spent yes, and then they had to graduate. Spent, yes, and you see, uh, we used to do all our courses online. And then, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the machine doesn't lie. Yes. Okay, and most of our courses now was um, either we, you, you do it on the piece of paper, okay, and then you take a scan and then you upload, yeah, yeah. or maybe it was the question and answers type mm -hmm. GKM. And then, most of the time, since you are doing it in, in, in the house, I mean, the, the 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 thing is that you shouldn't let the time beat you. Yeah. You should be in time, okay? Mm -hmm. And then people would do it, send the answers to their friends. That's mm -hmm. it. So, uh, I mean, COVID, COVID was a new experience. Trust mm -hmm. me, some lecturers didn't like it. Yes, of some course. Some lecturers didn't they like, like it. Because all. the fact that you're in your comfort zone yes, and, and you have the chance to, I mean, maybe open a oh, test book or but, but do it, a it, search it, online. It's when you go outside. I, I haven't been outside, but then if, if you should ask your friends, they tend to tell you most of the, the, the exam that they write, it's, it's, it's online. online. It's online. I mean, the books are there with you. It's, it's mm -hmm. more research. So I think that the... the <laughs> Educational sector should be <laughs> <laughs> the 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 the, uh, the Ghanaian educational system should try and then adapt to those things because trust me, um, I think one time, one time, uh, one lady traveled out, out outside the country and it was like, ah, that the Ghanaian educational system is so stressful. I mean, mm -hmm. if you go outside, it's not just it's stressful. Very good. Yeah. See, here, here, BBI change, You get me to be to class, you need to do exercises here yeah. and there, here and there. You get me. So I think that the, the COVID era, mm -hmm. it helped every student yes. upgrade his, his, his GPA. Yeah. I mean, to because get... Because you were home. Because I was the home. Test the the were test books were there. So would you say it was a good thing? It was. It, it, well, I, I would say it was a good thing. Not not hundred percent because of <laughs> you have it. Yeah, because that's what I'm trying to get. Oh, 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 because yeah, the fact that thing. you have the test books with you, mm -hmm. I mean the online searches are there. Yeah, you can jump anytime, it's, it's, and then your assignment you have the. I mean, a few hours to sit yes. in your comfort zone, zone and, and then consult, consult consult anywhere. Very, very that very, you want to consult and get your thing done. Very true, but I mean, for some of the courses, it's not like that. 
-hmm. a math course like this, a question can be given. You search the whole. Right. You, you are not going to find. You are not going to find. You are not going to find it okay. again. So I mean, in as much as it, it, it was good, it, it also pushed us to to learn, and it okay. was very impactful. Okay, yeah. Mr. Obade, I see you want to ask something. <laughs> Thank you very much. At this point, I could say that clearly, mm -hmm. Mr. Fon here is an interesting man. <laughs> <laughs> of course, because looking at how he was um, um, praising or saying praises yeah. to these online, online system of education. Yes, because he benefited one way or the other. <laughs> he maneuvered his way to pass. Yes. Yeah, and we all know it's clear. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, looking at the good and bad side of online exactly. education, I could say the um, good side or the positive side mm -hmm. outweighs the negative, the negative side, side. Okay. yes because um the online education helps mm -hmm. shy students to yeah. even participate in class mm -hmm. looking at student engagement yeah. because being in physically in class mm -hmm. will make them shy like too much shy that they won't even raise their hands up to mm -hmm. yeah. ask a question or yeah. uh, um, answer a question mm -hmm. But with their online, they will feel like mm -hmm. people wouldn't see them. Say something. <laughs> people wouldn't see them. So they just, hello, say, then they will start asking their questions mm -hmm. or answering their questions. Again, it was very comfortable and convenient, as they were saying, because right now, currently, University of Ghana is practicing this online system too. Mm -hmm. And especially for the satellite campus, at, um, like city campus, yeah. they are having a hybrid system of which a week they will go physical, in-person, yeah. in office-based class. Yeah. The next week they go online. online. So okay. looking at a student who stays at Pukwase, Amasama, or far places mm -hmm. here in Accra or around, yeah. the online is a game changer and a life-changing something that mm -hmm. would help that person. So I think it's having such positive aspect yeah. in terms of how flexibility, convenient and comfortable mm -hmm. it, is, it is and how participating or engaging itself students. Okay. Sure. Okay. Mr. Pong, I see you want to. All right. Answer. So let me come in here. When when he says uh, people who are shy now have the, the opportunity. opportunity to. Well, I think a, a shy person is a shy person. If, if, really? if, if you're shy in class, what shows that you're going you are not going to be shy online when no, nobody is that wasn't you. a face to face some people can't stand the crowd uh, so uh, well, equally yes, well, yes mm -hmm. but, but, but then if i don't answer questions in class and then i'm in the house even in class i don't answer questions in the house you don't answer i don't answer i don't answer yeah, in the house you will I, i'm not going to answer I'm, in the house i'm not going to answer any question you, you see i feel because maybe you have i mean no one is watching yes, we are right. all online even if your videos are out or your videos are working or mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. the person is not with you or in person with you where yeah. you are so it gives you that um that um time to express yourself or right. say something right. or two right or yeah, you still do not agree oh 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 well, 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 i would agree with you okay. partially, partially. Partially agree. Okay. again with the online system mm -hmm. it depends how unserious a student is uh, okay Yes, mm -hmm. because being an unserious student, even in class, the person will need to ask questions, participate or engage yeah. in lectures or class, yeah. not online. And with the online pool, the person will just be there, will join the class, and mm -hmm. will be doing something different because the person is at the comfort of, of his or her, her yeah. homes. Yes. So mm -hmm. with that, it depends how unserious a student is. And um, personally, mm -hmm. I, I don't like online at all yeah. because I don't yeah. have that interactions. Besides, peer engagement also yeah, helps in our academics. Yes. yes. So I often prefer to have an in person, in -person. lectures because that I one, see. I understand <laughs> things clearly. Yeah. But with you my interest one here, yes, mm -hmm. I think he will oppose me. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah yes. Yeah, I, I am going to op oppose him because, okay. I mean, if I should go to Zoom and then Google Meet, there's something called a uh, I think a classroom or a room, mm -hmm. a section where the group, each and every one. So, in as much as you don't like online learning, mm -hmm. you can't uh, based on the fact that you don't like, uh, yep. you don't like the fact you, you like the f fact that the you want to meet. I mean, you are still going to meet in person yes. on Zoom and on Google, Google Meet. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, I don't think it's <laughs> call, call someone for money and go meet the person for money and see the difference. Oh. <laughs> If the person is going to give it to you, he's going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, if you call me on phone and then I'm going to send it to Arsen. If you meet me in person, I, I can still lie to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Amadou, are you still with us? Um, yes. Okay. With you. Okay, so let's talk about it's some... It's actually a very interactive session. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Are there any changes, let me say, an overall changes in the well-being of students or in the academic um, well-being when it came to or when it comes to the online system of education? Was there that um, overall well-being or were, were, were there some stress involved during the online system of education that shifts to that shifts from in-person to online? Exactly. In the Gambia here, there has been a great improvement and then students were also able to build the feeling of, you know, coming online, even if they have, you know, some assignments to do, somebody will just rush to create a Zoom link or maybe um, to come up with, um, let's say, a Google Classroom link. You know, sometimes we even meet using Microsoft Teams and then the other online platforms where we can discuss these things, especially for the um, site of recording, like I said, this is something that our students keep on doing. And when it is time for exams, due to the flexibility, um, the, the rigidity, or let's say the nature of the timetable, because we have mm -hmm. students in from different faculties sometimes who are doing some general requirement courses at the same time. So based on the timetable, you have different courses at the same time and also during exams, you may have a, a course this morning when somebody have a course tomorrow also. But then the online um, platform was being now mostly by university students to come online who are doing the same general requirement courses to discuss mm -hmm. and also to do some revision on uh, lectures okay. that they have been uh, doing during the course of the trimester or the semester. So okay. that is something that they have adopted and everybody is enjoying it. And then anytime there is a revision or let's say a tutorial, if the link is shared, mm -hmm. it is shared across all WhatsApp platforms, which is mostly used by the students in the Gambia. So you see people joining, okay. joining, joining. So I think at some point it has um, created that and also promote and encourage the sense of students coming together to share their ideas on an intellectual ground based on the lecture notes and the likes. Okay, okay, but then one more. Were there some strategies that you adapted to during the online system of education? I mean, to make your work easier and then faster since it was the new normal? Yeah, of course, because the management come up with this, especially to the mature students. Um, there was yeah. um, this online, there is this opportunity that students who are unable to um, come on board to join the live mm -hmm. lectures, can always join online. At some point, okay. this may also attract some little cost, you know, from the student, but then um, lecturers are also able to understand that during lectures, they will put on their cameras on and then also, you know, they will unmute their, their, I mean, uh, their speaker so that, you know, those people can hear. And whenever they have contribution, the lecturer will obviously fix um, the Bluetooth to also let the class hear okay. what they are saying. And sometimes mm -hmm. they are also grouped accordingly, even they are not part of the class sessions. So that is another impact um, that the university have, have also adopted because they even realize that, particularly those differently able that I talk about, the cripples and some other people who cannot even go up for their lectures. So they have now considered yeah. those people, and that is another thing that favors those people now for the rest of their life. So it's like now they don't even have to struggle to go up; that will just only yeah. become an option for them. And then the faculty officers also understood them on that. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Madu. Let, let me come to you, Mr. Obed. So sure. were there some um, strategies you had to adapt in order to fit yourself into the new normal? I mean, yeah. Sure, thank you very much. So since it's the new normal, mm -hmm. there were certain strategies that I devised okay. at that time that helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm having a two hours lectures. I will prepare myself. I will ensure that I'm having yeah. an adequate data or network that could facilitate my easy going through all the session. And I get all my gadgets and everything, learning materials ready for mm -hmm. the class. Yes. And I also find time and search for a place where I could get a strong internet connection to avoid any technical issues. And I also make sure to participate because mm -hmm. in as much as we are not facing, um, we are not having an in-person yeah. class and online too, things will change. And yeah. definitely you have, as a serious student, you have to get all things ready, participate in class and mm -hmm. know the way for because you are serious about education mm -hmm. since you know how best it could help you in life. Okay. So that was all folks. Okay. Mr. Pong. Yes. Please. So I, uh, I think everything boils down to the device. Okay. Yes. You have the device ready to enhance your learning mm -hmm. because 
uh, trust me if, if if you are serious and you do not have the adequate d device and then resources network mm -hmm. to engage in the online learning you you might feel yeah. okay and i i, I think um, issues came up with oh say i was doing my my exams and then the network, yeah, the network went, off. went off and then funny enough now we are in the COVID era everybody is in this house yeah. when the COVID came most of the lectures went outside the country but mm -hmm. yes, most went and then some blocked themselves and then they, they everybody based um their their education and everything on the internet. Yes. Okay. And if you are doing an online exams, the moment mm -hmm. you are done, it records and then it gives you the figure there. Mm -hmm. game. That's so, true. so you can't you, you don't have that time. You, you can't do anything. Even the yeah. lecturer cannot do anything unless maybe he's to add up Max yeah, for you. you. So um, I think preparation boils down to you having the adequate the devices, the right mm -hmm. network to um, engage um, in the online learning. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so we are almost coming to the end of um, the discussion. So can you can we finally talk about? Um, I mean, what do you think your recommendations will be for students to adapt to the online system of education? Well, I, I think my my recommendation would would uh, focus on learning, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if you are adapting, then you are learning, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't only focus on the students, but in the lectures as well. Because yeah. if if a lecturer cannot um, adapt to the Mamba. to okay to mm -hmm. teach you, then then, then you're at a loss. Anyway. Do, do, do yeah. Because um, they are teaching us, okay? So in, in as much as we are adapting. In as much as the world is evolving, because trust me, now most of the schools are adapting to the to the online. Even yes. even in the math departments, now they have their lectures online, mm -hmm. which wasn't the case. Yeah. Do you get me? But then today they are doing it because the world is moving forward, mm -hmm. and then we need to catch up. Yes. Okay. So in as much as um, we as students um, need to um, uphold our, as ourselves, mm -hmm. we, we need to be ready for what is coming. Because yeah. trust me, anything at all can come again. Yeah. Anything. You, uh, we just have to be can, yes, so, so so we need to be prepared as a country and to the educational sector. I think they also need to be prepared because I mean they were facing challenges a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. when it comes to the rural areas. Now, I mean, uh, we've been talking about online learning and then only focusing at the universities. What of the secondary schools, the JHSs mm -hmm. who are to come Basic home schools, and yeah. the business schools who are to come home mm -hmm. and then they, they didn't know how to use the phones. Mm -hmm. So all these things are things that the educational sector need to sit down and then look at device means and ways to curb um, such issues if we are to face any okay. in the near future. Yes, okay. Please. Mr. Madu, if you can hear us, um, we would like to take your, your, um, your, your take on recommendations for students adapting to the online system of education because we know it has come to stay. Yeah. It has actually come to stay. So if you can hear us. I think uh, to that point, um, I would recommend that um, every school from now on should actually prioritize um, the use of um, computer devices as well as you know other electronic devices to um, from uh, let's say senior school, okay. so that by the time they get the tertiary level, it will obviously becomes uh, very easy for them to connect and then do their education easily. Because one of the great things that even the University of Uganda does was they were also able to provide more players as well as computers mm -hmm. um, during the COVID and immediately after, and even yeah. made it now, now a course on every 100 level student to do this course, computer programming course. And then now you can notice that the students are not only limited to do the course with more of theory, but they subject them to be going to the IT labs yeah. to be able to also do practical work. So I think that. Um, it is better late than never. But what we should have now embraced at start is that you should now have more computer mm -hmm. um, teachers deployed or let's say employed in the uh, in the school, senior schools who will teach and train the students about you know how to operate computer and how to also use of devices, okay. how to prepare uh, for uh, online meetings and the like. But it's just unfortunate that in the Gambia here, um, most of the other areas that people focus on is let's say the English science and some other core. So we really have people who study computer, but then they are not as much as that of other areas who study, let's say, bachelor's in computer science or let's say mm -hmm. master's and so. So okay. they are really limited, and those of them who also have that high knowledge are also being um, employed or employed to, let's say, institutions. 
and some of these higher institutions. So at some point, we can all understand that the nature of IT is in such a way that if you have the knowledge, you may not also be easily employed by, let's say, any organization or any institution or small school that will be able to pay you a very attractive salary. But maybe yeah. um, the governments, and let's say, you know, partners should look into this and see what mechanism can they put in place so that they make sure that, you know, IT becomes not just only an option, but it becomes, let's say, mandatory upon students to be able to um, do it, you know, from their mm -hmm. junior secondary school to senior school. By the time they are at tertiary level, obviously they yeah. will be able to understand and operate how to use computer. For example, mm -hmm. you will meet a student in my country. If you ask them mm -hmm. about email address, or maybe someday will be like, I don't have email. Sometimes it's sad. I ask um, myself, but why? Yeah. But if you ask them, you will see that they spend a lot of time on WhatsApp, texting, chatting, and mm -hmm. the likes. So email is something that you don't need to actually be there always. But you can just yeah. have your email and your password. But if a student should be able to know how to create an email for him or herself, and also how to respond to email, just to name a few, which is more easier and cheap, but because they are not aware, they are not exposed to these things, they hardly understand and then see that maybe it's even a difficult task, especially if you talk to them about email, you understand? So mm -hmm. I think these are some of the things that we should start orienting them to ensure that every student have a working email before they go to tertiary education, tertiary mm -hmm. level. And then yeah. they will, because obviously at this um, uh, current time of the technology, most of them are able to operate smartphones, even though they don't mm -hmm. have, but sometimes they use either from their parents or so and the like. So along mm -hmm. the way, I think we can incorporate these opportunities to make sure that, you know, we strategize the use of, um, let's say, technological devices to mm -hmm. advance the capacity of, of our students at large. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Amadi. I'll take your final words to over. Sure. So, just as Mr. Amadi said, mm -hmm. um, provision of such devices that could aid in the online participation and everything. Yeah. But this time around, with strict supervision, mm -hmm. because looking at the youngsters coming, and um, as Mr. Opon said, mm -hmm. the JHS people, the senior high school people, yeah. all they know is now TikTok, TikTok, YouTube, mm -hmm. watching reels and everything. Mm -hmm leaving what they intend to exactly. do or what they are supposed to do they yeah. just aloof okay so i think with strict supervision to they can get to know how to go about these things because we have to prepare we ought to prepare for what's coming yes. we can't predict the future okay. circumstances do happen mm -hmm. so we have to prepare and again university students especially should do away with the excuses of the connection, my network issues. But I, I, I don't think they're excuses, are they are excuses, are they? They are excuses because okay. I can even join a class and a friend will be joining the same class. I mean, my roommate will be joining the same class mm -hmm. and the person will be like, hello, sir. And the person will be breaking his voice <laughs> like the net, there is a network yeah, issue. Like well, they they to talk. Of course. <laughs> so they should do away with excuses. If we are really willing to study and mm -hmm. pass and excel in life, mm -hmm. you should do away with excuses because excuses um, are, are, are the enemy of the real power. Okay. So. All right. So thank you very much. Mr. Pong, would you want to add something? All right. So I think the well, what he said, I wouldn't agree with him because okay. trust me, when, when people are going through challenges, they are really going through it. Mm -hmm. Maybe a fraction of them would, would like to play around it. But then some people are really some going people through it, are, it. when it comes to network issues. Because mm -hmm. me, um, I had complaints, okay, about people saying, Oh, just as I, I, I told you, with the exams, they are writing exams and then it just went off. Okay. Some join the class and then it just goes off. Okay. So, I mean, uh, some may be playing around it because mm -hmm. their friends are doing it. But then, in most cases, I mean, it, it's... Sometimes it's, it's true. true. Okay, yeah. sometimes it's true. Yeah. But to what extent are we going to keep on giving suggestions? Yes. Yeah. I think those are challenges. Yeah, that challenges that just... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for joining in um, the discussion when we um, discuss online learning and student engagement. This has been African Student Voices, and I had here with me lovely guests. You can go to our social media handles and get our conversation at Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube. My name is Chimai Madaladem Doche, and I have been your host. Thank you. Stay tuned. See you next time. Same time. Bye.